here coming to you today with another detailed backup lesson. This time we're going to look at playing backup to the classic gospel song, Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Students always ask me what's the single thing I could do to improve my playing the most, and I always tell people it's learning to, to play better backup. If you can play good backup, you're basically everyone's best friend at the jam. If you can make other people sound better, people are going to want to play with you. And in real life jam situations, you're going to be playing backup probably about 95% of the time, if not more. So backup is super, super important. I'm going to break down both the verse and the chorus. I've got two ways to play the backup through both of them. And I've got my buddy Clint playing guitar and singing on this lesson. I'm going to break down all the backup I did and then show you my thought process on kind of why I did this. We're going to talk about the basic melody and how to stay away from the basic melody while we're playing our backup down the neck. All right, here's the backup lesson for Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. And if you're watching the preview of this lesson, you can head over to my website, MikeHeadingMusic.com, and grab the full lesson. You'll get access to watch all the videos, and you can download the tabs and the practice tracks. All right, here's the backup lesson for Swing Low, Sweet Chariot in the key of G. All right, let's start breaking down this backup lesson for Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Let's start by breaking down the first eight measures. So let me play the first eight measures, and then we'll break down what we're playing and then talk about, again, kind of focusing on staying away from the melody. That's what we're gonna work on for this lesson is playing down the neck back up while trying to stay away from the melody. So let me play the first eight measures and we'll start breaking it down. Here we go. Do that a couple times. time really slow. Okay, so we're going to start with just a classic rolling backup lick, and we're basically going to be kind of going from this open third string to our open first string in measure two. So again, we're gonna we're gonna roll into that. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about there is the open third string is the root note. So we're just gonna fill that up with a roll and a slide. And again, it's a good way to to basically reinforce the, the the first opening chord, the first opening G chord by playing kind of that root note roll. So that's what we're doing there. I'm gonna do a two five slide on the fourth string. So I'm sliding up to where that note becomes the same note and then I'm rolling through it thumb index middle with my right hand. And then I'm gonna go up and do five three one, another forward roll. And then I'm going to do 5-2 and then open first string it. So basically another four roll. And 
that's gonna cross into measure two. So we have. And then I'm gonna do a two, three hammer on, on the second string. So basically the same idea. I'm finding that note string and this time I'm hammering on instead of sliding but same concept so those those hammer on and slide rolls are basically just a way to fill up a single note idea on the banjo you know kind of think of like a, a violin might play one really long note you know to, to basically play a kind of a backup melody line and the banjo version of that is basically doing kind of a roll so I'm finding that note and then I'm sliding into it forward roll has a, a lot of good kind of forward momentum it keeps that drive up so that's a really good roll to start with again you're, you're starting with that kind of authority of that forward roll and then I'm going up hitting the open first string for measure two two three hammer on on the second string my thumb on my right hand is going to come down and then I'm going to do five two one five and then I'm going to go down into my C chord and pinch and then do five, two, one, five twice. And then back to the open third string for measure four. So we have. A little faster. So probably the trickiest part is giving beat one of measure two, a quarter note. That gives you time to have your thumb come down. And then you're pinching these two notes, index and middle, and then rolling forward. So the basic melody starts with... So that's kind of a rough version of the, the melody. I looked over Jordan and what did I see? we have so that'd be like the first eight measures of the verse so I'll do it slowly and your particular version of the exact basic melody might vary a little bit the finer details are, are a little bit subjective but that's kind of a, a rough, again, a rough basic melody. We are kind of playing that same initial part. We're doing a roll there. But we're doing a roll that doesn't have a lot of like licks and it's, it's kind of what I call a generic background sounding roll. And then the melody goes up to the second string see it goes down so that's where we're going up we're playing up on the higher strings there and then for the C we're, we're again we're staying up on the first two strings and then in measure four we play the open third string where the melody goes down right so again you, you it's not that you could never play the same note as the melody but you're just kind of in general terms wanting to stay out of the way. So the melody kind of starts on the middle strings. So we're, again, we're kind of starting low and then going up high to stay out of the way. Okay. Then let's move on. Then we're gonna do outside strings, five, one, and then roll forward. So three, two, five, one there. And then the melody again stays down and then goes up. So we're gonna basically do the opposite of that. We're gonna start up high again. So we roll forward and then right here, two, three hammer on the second string, but you gotta start it with your index finger because the last note of measure four was your thumb. And then we're gonna go down, open third string. It's like a little fill lick. So I did thumb, quarter note, and then five, three, one, back to the third string, and then second fret, and then first string. So you have that second fret on the fourth string. And 
and we're going to hit the low open D string, again, where the melody goes up. That's the coming for to carry me home part. So we're going to basically do the opposite of that. Again, we're going up. We start up high when the melody is lower. And then we're going to play a little lick. There's also a long space here, so the melody is home is one really long word, right? So that's where a perfect spot to throw a little banjo lick in. So we have... So classic Scruggs two measure D lick. We're gonna hit the open four string, go into your three finger D chord. So my first finger, second fret, third string, second finger, third fret, second string, pinky up on the fourth fret, first string. So you hit that open four string, do a backwards roll, uh, middle index, and then move your thumb or uh, third finger, excuse me, your third finger to the fourth fret third string and do thumb index on the same string of your right hand. And then down fourth string, first string with the fourth fret down. So you, you basically walk down these notes. Could also be a one measure lick but we're going to extend it into a two measure lick i'll show you how but this would also be a great one measure lick in d and then your thumb of your right hand come, comes up and hits the second string and then third finger back to the fourth fret third string and then take your third finger off move it back to the fourth fret fourth string and then do thumb index uh, third string second string and then take your pinky off and do four string first string Probably easier to play than explain. Let's play measure eight. It's the second half of the lick. So the whole thing sounds like this. So you use this open four string to get you into the lick. kind of JD Crow or Earl Scrugg style lick. You also might use that over like a C chord. Something like that. Or up here on a G chord. It's a classic two measure lick. And remember, let's go back to the basic melody. So the basic melody is... And then it just hangs out there. So there's a lot of space there. So again, you can think of any time in the melody where there's a lot of space, that's a perfect spot to throw a lick. So that's what I'm doing there. 